Aaron Sports was an internet pioneer. Um, he co-founded Reddit. He contributed to the authorship of the first standard for something called uh, RSS, which is used to syndicate uh, news content that uh, flows from blogs and other things. Um, but Aaron Schwartz got himself involved directly with a lot of debates about censorship and the availability of content online. He helped lead the protests that led to the SOPA bill being dropped. Um, but at some point, uh, Aaron Schwartz decided to do something uh, fairly interesting at MIT uh, that ended up having some fairly tragic consequences for him. So uh, what did he do? So here's Aaron Schwartz. Um, and Aaron Schwartz was, was sort of seemingly sort of a rebellious person. And so um, he decided that it was important that um, certain medical knowledge that was being developed and other types of academic knowledge be shared more freely. So when you're on university campuses, uh, he was at MIT at the time, um, you get free access to these journal articles that uh, normal people would have to pay for from outside the university. So what Aaron did is that he took a computer and he put it, I guess, in a closet in, 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 on some floor in an MIT building where it would be able to connect to the campus network and would have access to all these uh, articles that were part of the JSTOR online uh, article database. And he had that computer just repeatedly download articles from that database and make them publicly available online. And so if you think about what he was distributing, you know, he was trying to make an argument that this sort of information, this sort of knowledge should be in the public domain. And in many cases, I think that's not an unreasonable argument. In a lot of cases, the types of research findings that are being published by academics are supported by federal funding. So this is your tax dollars at work. So the idea that somehow uh, this intermediary third party is now going to charge you access for research that was funded using money that you contributed to the federal government is kind of strange. But anyway, so the argument he was making was this content's important to uh, sort of broadening human understanding. It should be available online. Um, he wasn't distributing the latest copy of the Beyonce album. He wasn't distributing, you know, the latest Star Wars movie before it was out on DVD. Um, he was distributing content that not a lot of people would have actually had very much interest in. Um, unfortunately, when this was discovered, um, he was charged with a series of computer-related crimes and um, the prosecutor that was uh, handling the case was fairly aggressive about you know, uh, pu pushing the charges. Um, and it, had he the, sort of been charged up to the maximum, he could have spent many years in prison. Uh, he was off offered a deal, I guess, to spend only six months in prison. Of course, when you've never been to prison, six months in prison sounds uh, pretty terrifying. Um, and so, you know, uh, it, as a result of the stress that went along with this and, and the result of fears about the effect this would have on his life, um, Aaron Schwartz decided to take his own life. Uh, and so this was, you know, again, a really sad and incredibly tragic story um, of sort of the, the, you know, the really sad end of someone who clearly very passionately believed in the open exchange of ideas and believed in the internet as having a role in that exchange. And, you know, took what probably seemed to him to be a fairly small and maybe even insignificant act of civil disobedience, simply just making medical journal articles available to the broader public, um, and ended up seeing how, you know, to some degree, the strictness of some of the laws that we have about this sort of thing and the aggressiveness of someone, uh, you know, in, involved in a situation who might not have understood the statement he was trying to make, um, you know, backed him into a corner from, from which he decided not to, not to escape. So, um, so again, sort of a, you know, a, a sad tale, a cautionary tale, um, but a story about someone who really believed in the power of the internet to enable the free, open, um, and vibrant exchange of ideas.